today we're talking to Aubrey Lynn Jepson, who uh, is a contributor to Containment Breach Volume 4 of Clouds and Ether. Aubrey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Uh, Aubrey, who are you? What can you tell us about yourself? So um, I usually tag my myself as a comics editor, writer, and letterer, but I'm leaning more into the first and the third nowadays. Um, I just uh, edited Tales from the Cloakroom. I was one of the editors on that book. Oh, okay. So, and I, uh, I had done uh, graphic design as a hobbyist for like, since I was like 20 years old. And then uh, like I did like social media graphics and things like that last 10, 15, or not 10, 10 to five years, five to 10 years. That's how I should say it. And then the last year or so I got really into lettering and I took some classes and this is going to be my first published credit as a letterer. So I'm excited. Oh, oh I am very pleased to hear that. Oh, that's <laughs> excellent. Um, what, why, why lettering? So this is, this is a journey and you're, you're like zeroing in on something. What was it about lettering? Um, so with comics, when you, I mean, you know this, like with comics editing, you're both an art director and someone who has to know story and stuff like that. And as I got into it, I'm like, well, I want to learn most of the jobs. I don't think I'll ever be like a, a penciler, but I might do inking, might do coloring. But lettering was the one that I knew I already had skill sets for. Right. And so I took a comics experience lettering class to really learn how to how to use the tools I already knew was familiar with to like figure out how to make the bubbles, how to export the files and things like that. And so it really helped me just uh, kind of use skills I was already already acquainted with to some extent. And I think like people forget that lettering's art too. Like now that I've gone through these classes and like I have Blambot's book on my shelf and stuff like that, like you know when lettering is bad because you can see it. Good lettering you can't see. And I mean, every letter will say that, but like, it's not just that. Like good lettering is design and art and like, like you can you can make things expressive and interesting in really creative ways. And so I really like that, that I, I could already, I already knew how to do a lot of these things and I could do it without, um, you know, my, my hands aren't as strong with, with drawing, but lettering, I can funnel those skills right in. So that's what I really liked about it. I, I um, I'm fascinated by it and I'm uh, tempted James, my my partner, the uh, uh, co-founder of uh, Fugitive Bones, and he's the artist, I'm the writer. He wants me to start lettering and I've started flirting with it. I've got the Blambot book and um, I'm fascinated by it because of how important it is. And that's not something I at all recognized years and years and years ago as a comic fan. Um, we had a story on Containment Breach Volume 2 that every step of the process was a wow. Oh, this story. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at the, and then the lettering came in and it was like, it, it was like every positive aspect of the story was gone. It made it all look bad. Not like there was something bad on top of it. It changed the vibe of the piece entirely. Uh, and we were working with some awesome people. It was, the person was trying something and we worked on it and gave some suggestions, came back amazing. But that was when it really came home to me. I, I Before that, I'd figured it out. But that extreme of this just utterly altered this piece um, was shocking. And I don't even know how to explain it to people who, uh, I've got a buddy who's fond of saying, if you know, you know. And it kind of feels like that with lettering. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. It just, it's one of those things that like, like I said, I just edited my own anthology and like, we did have a few things like that where we had to go back to somebody and say, Hey, this isn't going to work. Um, and I know a lot of new writers in comics, indie comics, especially like to letter their own work. And I'm like, letter lettering in, in comparison to other parts of your process is usually cheaper. Like it's worth hiring someone who has the eye for it. Yeah. Um, because like you said, it can completely bring a story down if the lettering doesn't look like good, you know, yeah, like how it should. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's the words and whether you realize it or not, you're hearing them in your head and the lettering is a tone. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, the tone can sound immature. It can sound off. It can sound strident. It can right. I don't know that people quite understand that that's the connection, but that's what your brain is doing. Whether your brain, brain is making a voice out of it, whatever you read, whatever comic you read, you have ascribed a voice to each of those characters in your head and you might not even know it. And so much of that comes down to the lettering. Um, 
Uh, tell me about editing. Uh, um, how do you how do you enjoy that part of the process? I I like it a lot. I really thought when I first got into comics that I wanted to be a writer, and I do enjoy writing. Like, but I in a lot of aspects of my life, I've been the kind of person who someone can bounce an idea off of and we can take it from something very small to something big and better. And so I just enjoy helping coach people creatively. And so um, when Tales from the Coke Room started, they asked, they like emailed a bunch of people for, or like messaged a bunch of people from the Scott Snyder Discord, like, do you want to be a part of this? And I said, sure, but I want to edit. I don't want to write for it. I want to just do the editorial side. And um, I don't know. I love, I, I especially love working with people who are excited to improve their work. Cause like some people are not as receptive to feedback, even, even after they've paid me, they're, they're, they're like, Oh, I don't know. Like maybe I'll take your stuff. Maybe I won't. But I really like the people who are like, Oh my gosh, this is a lifesaver. Thank you so much. Like this is helping me see the, like, I, and I know I can't do it with my own writing. Like I can't see where the problems are, like all of them. I can see some of them, but not all of them. And the thing I love about comics versus like prose, prose editing or like story editing is the art. Like you get to not only see like the, the script and you can look at for the holes in the scripts, but then you get to see the art and you get to be like, okay, this is what we need to work on here. And then you get to see the lettering and the coloring and, and just see how all those pieces go together. So I don't know. I just love that aspect of comics specifically, that it's just such a different medium than the others. I agree. I, I, I believe I'm a good writer and I believe I'm a good editor and I can't edit my writing. It, you can't, you can't look in the mirror and do it. Um, yeah. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, to paraphrase Andy Warhol, it's a darling that you can't kill. Uh, I could slaughter all your darlings, but uh, I can't take out one of mine, you know? Yeah. Um, and, but then when somebody else says it, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> some of, I find that some of what I do as an editor is tell people what they know. And they just needed someone else to say, hey, no, I know I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I've, I've had that experience many times where they're like, yeah, I did know this was a weak point. I just didn't think you were going to catch it. And it's like, yeah, no, I did. So yeah. let's fix it. We're going to make yeah. this awesome. <laughs> but the cool thing about that is it's an affirmation of them too. Because you knew. And, yeah. and I'm not going to judge you for being attached to it because I get it. I mean, I've gone through 10 drafts of something and just left this blaring thing that shouldn't be there because I didn't want to take it out until somebody said why is that there I'm like yeah I know be quiet <laughs> um so what did you do for containment rich um I am a letterer on the star people by with uh written by T Bellick and uh with art by I'm hoping I say the same correctly but I probably won't Iacopo Calisti yep yep uh we, we yeah. rocked it yeah the, the story's beautiful yeah, I got, when I got the pencils and I did the like just the lettering draft over the pencils, I was like, oh, this is going to be beautiful. And then I got the colors, like the full art. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is gorgeous. And I've seen Iacopo did two stories on Tales from the Cloakroom. So I've seen their work before. Um, they did one with with T and then one with another writer on our on our book. And um, like they just knock it out of the park. Their, their story, their like design, their, uh, blah, 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 sorry, I'm getting so excited. I can't form words. That's good um, their style is so like emotive like both of those stories one one was a like a supernatural story on uh, in the in the anthology and one was a slice of life but like kind of heavy hitting one like with some supernatural elements and uh both of those like we're just like this one where you're just like, oh, your heart hurts by the time you're done or like you're freaked out a little bit because of how good it was yeah yeah, there, there is an empathy present in the pencils, in the inks, in the art. Uh, and also and it matches this deep heart of the, the writing of the story. Um, watching, uh, uh, you guys were working with uh, our senior editor, Mark Capitelli. Uh, watching it come together was thrilling because it was not, something we were expecting or the direction that the story went uh and it resonates i was saying before we we came on here that it it sort of rang in me and echoed in me uh and um i find myself going back to it and checking it out and panels will pop into my head uh and, and uh and i can't wait i can't wait for people to see it uh it's tremendous yeah i loved um like 
I don't know. Like it's such a interesting concept and they they were uh Iacopo was really able to like take the concept he had in their head and like put it on the page in such a interesting and uh like like some of these concepts when you especially when you're dealing with more supernatural elements are harder to put on a page yeah and I thought they did a really excellent job with that yeah yeah it's it's fantastic and it's different um I don't want to give anything away so I'm not going (laughs) yeah I'm trying to do the same yeah yeah. (laughs) You would not expect the story to affect you in the way that it does based on the content. I I don't know. That's the vaguest, most correct, hopefully, way I think I can say it. Like, not that you wouldn't expect expect it to affect you. It's going to. But the way it affects you is not what that content would normally do for you. Yes, absolutely. No, I, so T sent sent me the script I think initially when they contacted me about lettering the comic and I was like, oh, wow. And then, like I said, every stage when the art came back, I was like, oh, wow, this is getting even better. Oh, wow, this is getting even better. And T is really talented at stuff like that. I've worked with them on a few things and like they just are, they're really good at getting to the heart of things. And, and even deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Aubrey, where else can we find your awesome work? Uh, so I mostly on Twitter, I'm at taming the muse and there's like a link to my website there. If you ever want to contact me for anything else, but like at taming the muse. So it's like the taming of the shrew, but the taming of the muse Love just it. shortened. Um, so that's like my whole brand. Um, cause I tame muses for, you know, with editing. So I like that. I like um, that a lot. Yeah, that's where you can find me on socials. I mean, I'm on like Insta with the same handle, but I don't really use Insta very much. Definitely more active on Twitter. And, and can people reach out to you as a letterer as well as an editor? Yeah, yeah. I've actually got three lettering jobs, or three or four lettering jobs lined up at this point, just like handshake agreements to like work on things coming up once they're finished. So I, I have a, a possibly uh, impossible to answer question oh, no. <laughs> without giving anything away. We just talked about how good the art and the story is. The We talked about how lettering can throw something off completely there was a a thrumming in me through the words and the lettering and the bubbles. Uh, When I read the story, you, you had to, you had to letter in in almost two different ways. In fact, uh, for the story, how, how did you, how did you find that? Um, the story deals with loss and I've had, I'm not going to say what kind of loss, but it does deal with loss and I've had loss in my life. And I've had loss that is similar to the characters in the story. And so the voice that narrates is very, very familiar to me. Okay. And uh, the voices that then speak in the story, like converse, um, I tried to give, I mean, I'm, this isn't giving away too much because it is called the star people, but I tried to give the star people a little bit of a different look with their bubbles. Yes. Like I initially I had all black bubbles with, you know, black bordered bubbles. And then I went for a light blue on that one because I thought that'll give a little bit of a I don't know erythral otherworldly feeling to this and so that was the reason for that artistic choice uh like I had already I'd done most of the pages and I went back and added that in after I'd finished them because I thought I, I like it was nagging in the back of my head like I need to change something there needs to be a different effect here um like I said, that that that's what letter, I, at least in my opinion, and I hope it's good lettering. Cause like I don't want to judge my own work, but like I think that's the thing that I want to emulate from the good letterers I like is that those are artistic choices, not just like we're not just putting le- like words on the page. We're putting words on the page with intention. The, the the that empathy I was talking about, the background vibe of the story. Um, a letterer could have utterly hijacked that story and made it something else, despite all the other constants staying the same. And uh, when the lettering came in, Aubrey, I've got to tell you, I, I could not have been happier. Um, the the that feeling not only did it not change the feeling, but it 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 it, it, it widened the feeling. It, it almost put it in stereo. And the the choice for the star people versus the other people in the story 
you talked about this and actually we've had Kevin Lintz on as well, who's a letterer. And he, he said what you said earlier that when a letter is doing their job right, you don't notice. Um, and I did it the first time because I just went, I felt it. And then I went back because this is what I do editing. And I want to know when something works, I spend as much time with it as when it doesn't. I want to know why does it work? Let's learn from this. Let's, and it was your choices throughout. Uh, so folks, if you need an editor, you've heard Aubrey talk about understanding writing and story and art together. If you need a letterer, uh, and uh, uh, and if you need a writer, if Aubrey's down for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be down for it. If, some, if you're an artist and you're like, I like what Aubrey's doing, I'm willing to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey, it, it, I'm so glad we got you on this project. Uh, so glad that you're a fellow fugitive. Uh, thank you for being on it. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for talking with me today. Yeah, thank you so much. I, it was a pleasure being on this project. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you feel that way. It is a passion project for James and I. And uh, we, we want that everyone to feel that way. Uh, Containment Breach is the series from Fugitive Poems. Go to fugitivepoems.com. You can order volumes one, two, and three uh, and click for the Kickstarter. If the Kickstarter is still going when you watch this, otherwise you can order it directly from the website. Uh, but go to the Kickstarter, back Fugitive Poems, Containment Breach, volume four of Clouds and Ether. It is a wild array of stories. It's, it's, it's a mixtape adventure for you to go through. They're all terrific because we have found incredible creators uh like aubrey lynn jepson who you can find one more time where was the number one spot to look um, at taming the muse on twitter at taming the muse on twitter i'm christian de mateo co-founder of fugitive poems we are fugitive poems and we make comics 